Hello everybody, this is Wesley and Giuseppe back with another tutorial video. Aw uh, yeah, today I'm going to be showing you how to get and use LoTAS, one of the best task mods for Minecraft. It works for almost every version of Minecraft, but today I'm just going to be going over the 1.16.1 version. If this mod is updated any further, I'll let you know, maybe make a short video about the changes. Enjoy! So, one of the first things you're probably going to want to know is how to get it. First, get Fabric for 1.16.1 with the tutorial in the description. This video isn't about Fabric, so if you have any questions about how to install Fabric, I would recommend asking the person who made that tutorial. Next, look in the description for the link labeled LoTAS and click on it. That should bring you to a site that looks like this. You're going to want to scroll down a little bit until you see this. You're going to want to click on Fabric API 1.16.1 and LoTAS 1.16.1. This will download them onto your computer. However, if you wanted to do, say, 1.14 LoTAS, you would click on LoTAS 1.14 and Fabric API 1.14. Just make sure that the versions line up. Also, if you're looking for 1.14, you're also going to want to make sure that you have Fabric for 1.14, not 1.16. Once it's downloaded, it'll say that, oh, it's going to destroy your computer, but it's not. It's not a virus. Your computer is just worried because it's a jar file. Make sure to press keep. After that, you're going to want to press this icon, or maybe it's show in a folder for you, depending on what type of computer you have. That should open up your downloads folder, and you should see these two mods in your downloads folder. Next, you're going to want to type percent app data percent into the search bar. It'll open up a folder. Next, inside of that folder, you're going to want to look for .minecraft and open it up. Inside of the .minecraft folder, you should see a bunch of different folders. I probably have more than you. But you're going to want to look for the folder label mods and open that up. Next, drag the two mods that we downloaded into the folder labeled mods. You then should be able to boot up Minecraft and play Fabric Loader 1.16.1. Once it loads, it should have all of the mods. If this doesn't work for you, make sure to let me know in the comments and I'll try to help. When you load in, you might see a message saying that this mod needs to use some of your data. I can't show you since I already agreed, but basically all it's doing is making sure that you don't submit any task runs to a legit speedrun on the leaderboard. It's okay, agree to it. You can ask the maker, I think it's pronounced MC Funkuchen, about it if you still aren't sure. Alright, now that we're in game, I can show you how to use the mod. One really handy thing is that if you press escape, it brings up this big menu. It may look daunting, but don't worry, hopefully by the end of this video, you will know how to use almost everything here. First of all, one of the most important tools is the tick rate changer. This slows down the game to make it easier to do and react to stuff fast. Normal Minecraft runs at 20 ticks per second. That means if I want to slow down the game to half speed, I can change the tick rate to 10. As you can see, the game is now pretty slow. You can also change the tick rate with keybinds, which we'll go over later. Another crucial tool for tasking is saving and loading states. Basically, if you press save state, it'll save everything about the world and you. Then, if you press load state, it'll reset you back to that exact point. Just wait a second. I'm back here. This is helpful in case you mess up with stuff. Say I want to try to, like, clutch on this tree. Oh no, I'm down here. It's fine. I can just press load state. And I'm back at the top of the tree. And I can try again. There are many glitches in Minecraft that we can abuse in our tasks. One glitch is duping. Using low tasks, duping is as easy as pressing two buttons and letting the mod do the glitch for you. How it works is basically you press the save items button when you have the items in your inventory, then you drop them on the ground, then you press load items, and then you pick them back up off the ground. So if I wanted to duplicate this blaze rod, I would press save items when it's in my inventory, then I would drop it, then I would press load items, and then I pick this one back up. And bam, now I have two. And I can repeat that. Save items, drop, load items, pick up. And then the same thing again. Save, drop, load, pick up. This can also be done even faster with a chest. Basically, you press save items, you put the blazer on the chest, and you press load items, and then you take it back out of the chest. It's very similar to how it we were duping with throwing the items on the ground, except this time they go into a chest. And it's even faster because you don't have to wait for it to pick up off the ground. Many drops from plants, blocks, and mobs are random. Luckily, Lotas provides a way to almost completely eliminate that randomness. This is the Manipulate Drops button. When you click it, it brings up this GUI. Do you want to make sure that you always get flint from gravel? Sure. Bam. Do you want to get the best possible drops from any plants? Well, it allows you to do that. Bam. One poisonous potato, 
five potatoes. Do you want to get the best possible drops from zombies, like an iron ingot, potato, or a carrot? Well, you can do that. Bam. Two rotten flesh, one iron ingot. Another random thing in Minecraft is when the dragon perches. Perching is required to kill the dragon fast, so it can be quite annoying sitting around waiting for the dragon, losing time. Luckily, Lotas also has a button to solve this. It's called the Manipulate Dragon button. Basically, what it does is when you click it, it opens this GUI. When you click Try to Land, the dragon will land as soon as possible. Here it comes. Mob spawning is also random, so obviously Lotas has a way to help. The Manipulate Spawning button opens this GUI. You can select from a bunch of different mobs to spawn, although watch out because some of them, like this ghast, actually spawn a golem. They're mislabeled. You can also tell them where to spawn. For instance, if I press F3, you can see my coordinates. So we would want to spawn one at maybe negative 1, 47, negative 168, maybe 169. As you can see, it shows where it's going to spawn the mob. Then I can tell maybe a creeper to spawn, and it spawns in. It also won't let you spawn the mob if the light level is too low for it, so if I had a torch right here, it wouldn't let me place this creeper, like this button would be grayed out. However, it will let you spawn things like blazes in the overworld, so make sure that your mob can actually spawn where you want it to first. Where mobs move is also, say it with me now, random. So, as you can probably guess by now, Lotas has a way to help. This is the manipulate AI button. When pressed, it opens this GUI. You can then click the arrows up at the top to cycle through the loaded entities until you find the one that you want to manipulate. So, if I wanted to manipulate the zombie, I just click this until the red box is around him. You can then select where you wanted to go by changing the coordinates down here. Once you have the coordinates selected, press Change Target, and it should hopefully move there. However, this feature doesn't work in 1.16, but hopefully it'll be fixed soon. Now that I've shown you all of those big features, it's time to show you some more niche but still super helpful features. The first semi-niche features I want to show you are these, down in the bottom left of the menu. Right-click auto-clicker automatically clicks 20 clicks per second for you if you hold down the right mouse button and have it enabled. As you can see, I'm just holding down the right mouse button right now, but I'm placing this many blocks this fast. Optimize Explosions makes all explosions, even from creepers, drop all of the blocks, since how many blocks are dropped is normally random. This is helpful for gathering blocks quickly in a task. As you can see, I've placed 25 blocks of dirt around this creeper, and when I explode him, we'll see how many drops. And as you can see, he dropped all 25. Drop away and towards me change which way items dropped by blocks or items fall, because the direction is normally random. As you can see, when I have drops away from me enabled, all the drops go away from me. However, when I have drops toward me enabled, they all come towards me. Avoid taking damage makes you invincible to damage by logging you out when you're about to take damage, giving you spawn invincibility for 3 seconds. As you can see, I come up here and jump off, no damage. However, don't use it in the end, since every time you reload the end, the dragon teleports super high up. It can also slow you down sometimes because it logs you out when you're about to take damage, thereby canceling your momentum. As you can see, I probably would have gone a lot farther if it hadn't logged me out there. Another feature is tick jump. It's pretty simple, you just say how many ticks you want to play for, press jump ticks, and it'll let you play for that many ticks before pausing the game again. For instance, if I want to play for 20 ticks, I click this until it has 20 ticks, I press jump ticks, then I press escape, and bam, it just let me play for 20 ticks. If I want to do 40, jump text, and then it pauses me again. And then it works on lower tech rates too, so let's go for like 4 ticks, that should be about 4 seconds. Press jump text, then 100, 200, 300, 400, and bam! Another feature is that by pressing F6, you can open up a GUI for a bunch of different information. You can see your precise X and Y, what the world seed is, what the tick rate is, how many ticks have passed, how many times you've saved state, and a bunch of other things, so make sure to check that out. You can also set keybinds for a lot of the things in this mod. I have some for save stating, duping, faster or slower tick rates, and more. There are three things that have keybinds that I haven't shown off yet, though. One of those things is automatically strafing. 
If you didn't know, jumping in the air, looking at an exact 45 degree angle, and holding W and then A or D makes you go a tiny bit faster than normally just sprint jumping. I haven't used this trick in many of my tasks because it's so hard to do even in tasks, and it gives so little of a speed boost that it isn't really worth it. However, now low tasks can automatically do most of that for you. If you look at the speedometer in the top left of the screen, you should be able to see that when I'm just sprinting, I get 5.61 blocks per second. However, when I strafe sprint, I get 5.73 blocks per second. And the same is true when you start sprint jumping. In order to jump while strafing, just sprint jump. And while you're in the air, start holding your keybind for strafing. I think it's H by default. So just like this. And yeah. Another of those features is free cam. If you press the keybind for it, I think it's I by default, your camera can fly around and help you look at things. However, you can't do anything besides look around when you're in this state. As you can see, I can't break blocks or anything. And also, I don't think you should use this in a task. I would just use it off camera to see stuff in order to plan your next move. Press I again to return back to normal. Finally, we have zero tick rate and advanced tick. If you press F8, the tick rate will be set to zero. Then, if you press F9, the game will advance by one tick and then pause again. You can press F8 to get out of the state again. While the game is paused, you can't break anything. However, you can click, and then, when you advance tick, it will break. Another incredibly useful feature is that if you hold Shift in the Escape menu, you can get extra options. Holding Shift lets you choose a custom tick rate if you click up in the top left. Let's go with 7. There's a tick rate that you couldn't normally get. Holding shift also allows you to name your save state. How about we name this sheep2? This is super helpful because if you hold shift and click where load state used to be, you can choose a state. So, say I wanted to go back to that previous one, you can click on sheep2 and load the state. This feature is actually really good because this means you can go back to previous save states, meaning if you accidentally save state in a bad spot, which happens surprisingly often to me, then you can just go back to the save state before it and try it again instead of having to either deal with it and settling for a worse run, having to go back in creative and try and emulate the whole previous save state, or having to redo the whole run. To show you what I mean, I've save stated right here. So now, say I'm trying to get over there. I accidentally hit this block, slowing me down, but I still save state for some reason. And now, if I press choose state, I can choose this one. The one taken just before that one. Which brings me back to here instead. There are also a couple of features you may have noticed when you load it in, since they're on the main menu and the world select screens. The first of those features I'm going to talk about is the configuration menu. This menu lets you change a bunch of different things about the mod to your liking. Save tick rate keeps the tick rate the same after closing and reopening Minecraft. High tick rate messages removes the messages that pop up in chat whenever you change the tick rate. Show tick indicator makes this thing pop up and disappear every tick when you're on tick rate 5 or below to show when a tick has passed. Pressing numpad 5 by default brings up this timer in the top left. Hide RTA timer makes the RTA part of the timer not show. Remove pearl delay disconnects and reconnects you to the world you're on every time you throw a pearl so you can throw them faster. Normally, this is the delay. With remove pearl delay, this is the delay. There is no delay. No damage unbreaking makes any tool that has even one level of unbreaking not lose any durability, since normally it's random whether it loses durability when it has unbreaking. As you can see, even with just unbreaking one, a shovel doesn't lose any durability. Show speedometer shows how fast you're going. It was what I used to demonstrate how strafing is faster. It was the thing in the top left. Finally, you can change what percentage of blocks are dropped when you have explosion optimization on. For instance, normally with it, it drops all 100% of the block, but if I set this to zero and then enter a world, and then turn on optimize explosions, explode it, as you can see, it drops no blocks. Another one of those features is the video up speeder. When you click on it, it'll download itself, and it'll bring up this menu. You can then give it a video file and tell it what tick speed it was played on, and it'll speed it up accordingly. This is nice for if you don't have a good editing program. However, I'd recommend just getting an editing program like Shotcut, since it's free, it can do a lot more. 
Another one of those features can be found in the World Selection screen up in the top left. The seed list can tell you some seeds that are recommended for certain categories of Minecraft speedrunning. You can also tell it to create a world with that seed, however every time I try it my game crashes, but you might have better luck. If it crashes your game too, just copy the seed from Onyx address and make your own world. Hopefully, more seeds will be added in the future. And finally, there's the Open Escape When Joining World feature. It's pretty self-explanatory, it'll just automatically pause the game and open the escape menu when you join a world. As you can see, it loaded and paused. So yeah guys, that was the video! I hope I helped you at least a little bit. If you have any more questions, make sure to let me know in the comments and I'll try to help. I'll also leave a link to the Minecraft casting discord in case you want to ask them. Also, this mod is still in development, it's technically still in its pre-release phase right now, so more features and bug fixes might be on the way. This mod is so big I'm sure I forgot something in this video, and new features might be on the way too, so I'll leave a pinned comment for anything I forgot or that's new. That's gonna be it for today though, have a wonderful day, take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck tassing!